Hi everyone, uh, my name is Uzi and I'm here to talk with you about Pandas. Um, I named this talk Pandas not just for data scientists since um, I have a feeling that in the PyData community data scientists use it uh, almost uh, exclusively and it's a, they recognize it as a very powerful tool and still other developers, no data scientists, or some of the, like most of the people that I know are hardly familiar with this tool. And I have a feeling that if more people will know about it outside of the data science community, there could be, this could be a very useful tool for them as well. Um, so before I start, uh, I have three questions for you. So please raise your hand if you heard of Pandas before, something that's familiar for you. Uh, and keep it up if you played with it, if it's something that you're a bit familiar with. And the last one, keep your hand up if you use it in production environment. Okay, so that's more or less what I thought. Um, so just to be clear, uh, this talk is, um, Yeah. So this talk is not for uh, a data scientist, and it's definitely not a tutorial, a uh, 30 minutes talk, uh, which will go through other subjects that you see, cannot even start cover the minimum that you need for, for uh, uh, Pandas. I included here two references that you can use if you feel that Pandas could be useful for you, and that's my intention. My intention is by the end of the talk, you'll feel that potentially a valuable tool for you, so you'll go to these references and, and learn it uh, deeper. Uh, I'll have a short demo to walk you through some of the basic stuff, because uh, I have a feeling that sometimes when you have like a quick start and you just understand what are the basics, it makes it much easier. Um, so yeah, and basically, Hopefully, you are developers that are not uh, data scientists, uh, and that's my intention. So about me, I have 30 plus years of experience with different platforms and languages, but in the last six years, uh, exclusively Python, and I am kind of fell in love in this language, and uh, it almost returned my joy of programming that I had in, in my youth, um, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, so I work for Bluevine. Bluevine is a fintech company. Uh, we basically give loans to uh, small businesses in the U.S. Um, part of the major components that we have in our system is the ability to approve or reject new customers and new deals. And for that, we have a very talented uh, team of data scientists who are doing a great job in doing that in an almost uh, impossible time frame, sometimes even minutes, uh, using all the data sources that we have. Uh, and as part of my previous role as a chief architect, I worked a lot with this team, and I had to learn Pandas in order to work with them, to help them with architectural design decisions, uh, Python. And when I learned Pandas more and more, I realized that the other projects I work on with other developers can actually benefit from this. And this made us start using Pandas also outside of the realm of data science, of pure data science. And, and we saw a lot of benefits from that, and I'm going to show some of it here. So when it comes to a, a programming language, I mean, you can see it as an interface between uh, uh, the human developer and the machine. And, and for me, Python is probably the best option on the side of the human developer. Like I feel when I develop in Pandas that the cognitive uh, uh, load is, is the minimal I can have when programming. But on the machine side of, of, this, uh, of this reality, we all know that Python has its limits. And most of the time, we don't really care about these limits, right? If you have a, uh, a web app, uh, a simple web app, we don't really care about this. But there are situations where this limit can be really problematic. And, and for these, um, we tend to ask ourselves, okay, so what do we do? How do we use, Pandas, uh, sorry, use Python uh, and still work out these limitations? So one of the things that uh, we all know is that um, if we use a specialized uh, Python feature, 
we uh, get much better performances. So for example, in this example, uh, you see on the left side, you see four uh, um, um, implementation of, of a loop. And as we all know, four is like the most open and versatile uh, tool that Python gives us for this ability to loop over things. And we know that list comprehension, which in a way limit the things we can do, but it's more specialized. And if you use that, we, as you see here, we gain quite a, a, a meaningful uh, advantage in performance, right? I mean, it's about 30% uh, here. And we usually use these specialized features not just because of performance, it's because this idiomatic Pythonic way of writing is also make the code clearer and, and easier to follow. Uh, the other thing we can do, we can leverage the advantage of C and, and, and Python kind of provide us, provide us a way to extend this optimized specialized solution uh, by implementing part of the code in C. So, um, and uh, an interesting quote I have here from, from uh, uh, um, a talk I heard of, of, of Rhodes is actually sometimes we think that C is a better option because it's a compiled language, but as he very nicely showed in his talk, the nature of, of the bad performance in Python actually comes from the dynamic nature of the language and not from the interpretation part. So he showed very nicely that the interpretation maybe can be, uh, um, maybe can be, uh, be responsible for 30% overhead, but the dynamic nature of the language is actually something that we pay around, in his talk he shows, like around 600% uh, overhead in performance. Um, so, as you know, a lot of libraries already take advantage of this uh, ability, and um, also part of the standard library in Python, of course, is written in C. And uh, NumPy and Pandas are, are some of these libraries. And, and uh, Pandas, just to give you really a, a, a short introduction, so Pandas is a, um, is, you can think of Pandas as, as a kind of an Excel. It's really a bad uh, metaphor to have going forward, but it's like a nice uh, starting point. So everything you can do with Excel or maybe in an environment we have database and, and, and SQL query, um, you can do with Pandas. Uh, Pandas is based on um, NumPy, and NumPy provides a very efficient uh, array implementation that is fixed size in creation. Uh, each element has the same type, and they, both NumPy and Pandas provide what they call ufunct, which are vectorized versions of many useful operations you can run over these arrays and uh, data frames. Um, if someone is familiar with our data frames, of course, uh, Pandas is, is very similar to that and actually based on that. So how can we actually improve performance with Pandas? So what's the trick? It's, it's quite simple. Again, it comes up to the... Uh, um, dynamic nature of Python and, and somehow uh, um, trade-offing this part and saying, okay, for this part of my calculation, I don't really need the dynamic nature, I need the performance. So if you look at this chart, uh, on the right side, you'll see a typical Python object, in this case, a list, so you have the object and the object refers to an array of objects, and each of, each of these objects is actually a reference to uh, a memory, uh, uh, to a structure in a memory that is scattered all over. So, and if you look at the left side, which is the NumPy array of very similar functionality, if you're willing to, uh, to live with the assumptions that NumPy has, like the, uh, uh, the same type for each element, then you have a continuous memory structure very similar to what you usually have with C arrays. And of course, this could be much more efficient, especially with uh, uh, CPUs taking advantage of operations that are done on this continuous block of memory. Um, so 
Pandas is, of course, just uh, a, a small part of a huge ecosystem, and if you are starting to use Pandas, eventually you'll be f able to use many more, maybe hundreds of other tools and libraries that uh, give you great performance and, and a lot of functionality. And this is part of the, of the, of the advantage of, of using Pandas. Um, so at this point, I would like to uh, walk you through a very simple uh, demo. I'm going to use uh, Jupyter. I assume that everyone here is familiar with Jupyter. Um, let me see how I can do it. Sorry about that, just a second. You know what, forget about it. Okay. So, So the first part is really uh, just the basic imports and some basic configurations uh, to load pandas. And then usually the typical thing uh, you start with is an uh, is a, a input file. It could be CSV or JSON or whatever. In this example, I just downloaded a, a sample CSV file with the boring sales information. Uh, and pandas provides you a very nice way of, of loading this data very easily. In this case, as you can see, just one method. Um, and the first thing you can do, you can just go to this data frame. Data frame is the basic structure, right? It's the, the Excel sheet that you can imagine that holds all this data. And you can easily browse through this data and see different columns and rows and data. And it's quite easy to really uh, get the first impression of what the data really holds. Uh, you can get uh, info of the different columns. Uh, when you see here object, it means that um, pandas hold Python object, which is not the greatest thing because in this case, uh, uh, it means that you don't really gain this uh, uh, performance gain I talked about before because it, there is some kind of indirection here because pandas is like still referring to Python objects. And ideally, you would like to see things like this with the floats here or integers where these are uh, native NumPy uh, types, which is where you gain the performance. So if you see at the price here, you see that for some reason, the price is an object. And usually, this kind of information, object means that you have strings, because there's no native string type that pandas use. It's, it uses the uh, Python string, and that, therefore you see object. So. And, and if, you, if you run some ufunk, you get this weird result, which is, looks more like a string concatenation than, uh, than really a summary of, of numbers. And if you look closely, you, you'll see that the issue. And, and the issue is that somewhere here, there's a, there's a, there's a comma, which is a, a common problem with CSV files, that sometimes you uh, load them and, and the comma is interpreted as something that's not numerical and then the infer, uh, pandas infer that it's a string and not a number. So, so with pandas, it's quite easy to really explore the data and see um, where are these, you know, the, where are these issues and how to solve them. So by using indexing, see, this is my data frame, so I'm referring to the column df price. Um, so first, I, see, I show here that if I use a ufunk under str, which called contained, I get a series of results, of Boolean results. And each one is actually um, um, a Boolean that uh, represents whether um, my cell contains comma or not. And if I use this series for indexing the data frame, so I go to the df price, right, and I, I uh, index it with the series that I got, then I 
get a filter of the data frame that I started with. So uh, Pandas uses this Boolean series as a, something that determines what rows I would like to see. And of course, for every true, I get the, the row, and for every false, it's filtered out. So here I see the issue. I mean, I have a, a price with a comma, and once I know that, it's quite easy. Uh, we, again, using UFANC uh, to deal with this issue, I can just use replace, and doing so, I can also, at the same time, change the type to int, just to make sure that we're working with integers and not with strings. And now when I do info, I see, right, it's int 64. And if I do sum now, I'll get the expected results, which are, of course, the summary of the price. So Pandas is great for data exploration. So, uh, and, um, you know, coming from uh, general purpose programming or other fields uh, in Python where you kind of have data structure and data and it's like you feel like, okay, it's so much work to really understand what kind of data you have. When you are used to Pandas, it becomes very easy to really just explore the data and understand it more and more. And it provides a lot of um, functionality doing that and I won't go over really too many because it's like a long list of hundreds of, of these functionalities. But just going through a very simple sample, very useful sample. So describe is like, um, is like something that Pandas gives you very easily. It's like for every numerical column, you get the different statistical uh, measurements. Uh, you can do it for a specific column. Uh, you can do like some kind of a value count. So if you have a value that repeats itself in this in this situation, we have different products, so you can see what's the frequency of each product. Um, of course, you can do all kind of other things. Um, here, you can see an example for a more advanced filtering. The, the, the uh, principle is very similar, but uh, uh, as you can see, I can do here a filter that's based on a range, right, between this number and this number, and I get the rows that uh, um, are applied with this, with this condition. Um, and of course, I can create new columns with calculated fields. So in this case, you know, I can have like a discount column. You can see it on the, on the left. And, and, and then you can do a lot more advanced thing like group by and statistics on these uh, different groups. So here I group by product and I have the different statistic of each product. And, I can do describe of each of these groups and, and have all the statistical measurements on them. Um, of course, uh, Pandas provide a lot of uh, visualization uh, um, tools. Uh, the simple one is like, like having histogram on all numerical values. Of course, I can choose one of them, just show it. And I can do, right, I mean, any custom specific uh, chart that I need. Uh, it's really endless. Um, so when I uh, finish uh, analyzing the data, I usually want to save the data. So uh, also here, Pandas provide a very easy to use um, uh, feature, like uh, I'm saving to JSON, I'm saving to SQLite. Um, and you can see here the files I have. I can read them back. I get the f right easily. The, the, I can read it with a SQL uh, query as well and get back the data. Um, the last thing I show here, uh, I won't be able to run, but if you're using Django, which we are, and this is something that we uh, use quite frequently, so you usually need uh, some kind of uh, a bridge between the Django uh, data structure and Pandas, and it's actually done very easily. You just use from records uh, on the Pandas side, and for the... Um, Django side, you just need to use values and, and specify the, the fields that you're interested in. Um, so once you do that, you are in Pandas world, and then everything, everything is available for you. Uh, the, and the last thing I want to show you is like, so Pandas and, and, and actually in this case, Jupyter, to show you something, it's about Jupyter, uh, provides uh, a, a, an option to develop plugins, and there are hundreds of very useful plugins. I want to show you one of them here. So I have my data sets here. And, uh, and this is a pivot table, so I can, I can 
examine the data uh, uh, in a um, more uh, interactive way, right? I can take, uh, for example, I can put the country here and I can decide, okay, I wanna do it also by city, not just by country, so subdivision. And then I can choose, you know, I can choose, uh, um, let's say average for the price, right? So I can see the average price on different, for different product in different country and different city, etc. So that's really a, a really quick glimpse of uh, what Pandas uh, provides. And um, I want to go back to, um, to my presentation, which is not really happening. Yeah, I think I need to, just a second. Oh, I understand why. that. Yeah. Okay. No, but it's not. Wait a second. Sorry. So, so how fast how fast is it actually? So, sorry, I ran. Um, I can I show here a very simple test I ran um, using on on the left side uh, um, Python uh, data structure in this case list on the right side uh, pandas. And you can see for different operations, uh, sum, filtering, and uh, multiplication, you can see more or less uh, you get uh, 30 times faster uh, results, which is not bad, right? I mean, if you have uh, some kind of operation production that takes uh, 60 minutes, and if you're introducing pandas, it's going down to two seconds, could really be uh, quite a difference. And I actually want to share uh, two examples from things we experience in production. So the first one is that um, we had a, a sync process that gets information from a third party and has to run a lot of comparisons with data from our uh, ORM, with Django. And by refactoring our solution to use Pandas, we were able to get uh, results that are 15 times faster uh, than before, so, and actually we got a cleaner code, so, you know, like, it's, it's not something that it's like immediately you see it, but once you're familiar with Pandas and, and, and you know how to read and use it, the code is much cleaner. And, uh, and being able to have this better performance, I mean, 15 times was really uh, uh, a very significant change for us. But, the second example is actually was much more amazing. It's like we had a, an example where we had to uh, use more advanced calculations using group I and things that are more involving like a, a more complicated business logic. 
And there we got 1900 times faster solution and was really something that was like, was looking like a mistake and, and we looked at it again and again and, and this is actually the result and it's quite amazing to see it. And it's clear that, uh, you know, we could have taken the original Python implementation and improve it without using Pandas, but there's no way we could have got to a, a such clean and easy to follow a solution. And that's the power of Pandas. I mean, it's not just being able to give you a, a much more performant solution, but this solution is usually nicer and, and much easier to follow. Uh, so if you decide to use Pandas, um, you should know that there is a Pandas way, and, and this is something that newcomers to Pandas sometimes miss. I mean, uh, in order to really enjoy the, the benefits of Pandas, uh, you really need to use ufunks as much as possible, and if you don't have ufunk, you need to use apply and not iterate over, um, which is something you can do with Pandas. You can iterate over the rows, but you should use uh, apply, which is a, a kind of a customized ufunk. Uh, and even if you get to the point where you need to iterate over um, uh, rows in, in data frame, it's still you see some improvements uh, relative to uh, Python. Um, and, and, and there's some situations where the more intuitive solution is not the right one, and I want to share one, one of them here. This is something we actually saw in production, so we had a situations where we had uh, 50,000 rows, for an example, and we need to uh, apply a category according to some kind of mapping that you see on the right side. So in this, this example, the category where you see a question mark should be C, because it's in the date range you see below. And the simple, straightforward approach was to use apply, right? I mean, to use apply with a, a function that we ran, that we wrote called get category. And it seemed simple, and, and, but for some reason, we saw that it took around 61 seconds. And it was like, whoa, like 61 seconds to have this simple, uh, relatively simple thing we want to achieve here. And by digging into it more, we actually understood that if we change our perspective here, if we instead of use apply and sort of iterate over the rows using pandas, we instead of that, we iterate over the, the mapping, the, the, the grouping that we have, and we let pandas filter uh, to do the um, it's magic, uh, and when we did that, we actually got a result that's more than 2,000 times faster. So we had a, something that ran in production with the, with the uh, original solution on Pandas. It took 61 seconds, and after this change, it took only 26 milliseconds, which is, of course, quite huge. Um, so very quickly, by using Pandas and Jupyter, you, only, you also get, you get other benefits as, uh, except for the very powerful tool that allows you to explore data, you also get uh, uh, this notebook which allows you to use, to run it in multiple environments, which could be very handy. You can write it in your development, test it on staging, run it again in production. You can share in the notebook, share the results, etc. And we're out of time, so I'll just quickly summarize. So my, for my perspective, the takeaway here is that you should learn pandas. It's not trivial. There's some kind of, of a learning curve, but it's not that hard. And I think you can gain from it uh, also in non-data science uh, uh, kind of problems. Um, and when you, um, when you do that, I think you'll find it more useful, of course, in data analysis, which is what data science do, but also in sync processes, as I talked before, in reports and exports, any process that deals with a lot of data. Uh, and when you use Pandas, uh, keep in mind that you have to be really flexible in the way you see things. It's not the simple, you know, iterative, uh, intuitive way of looking at data, but you have sometimes to change your perspective. And when you do that, you really gain a lot of um, advantage. Thank you. Thank you, Yuzi, for this. Great presentation about using pandas to avoid some simple for loops or conventions and being much faster. Oh. <laughs> I was thanking you for doing that. 
Um, well, we ran out of time, unfortunately. If there's a very quick question, raise your hand and run. Otherwise, okay, I'm running to you. First, thanks for your presentation. My question would be, uh, have you encountered uh, a case when uh, replacing a, a complex SQL query with some pandas logic would be quicker? was uh, whether we experienced a situation where we had a very slow a SQL query and by replacing it with pandas we gained um, uh, better performance. Well, it really depends. I mean, usually if you have a, a, a SQL that goes to the server and runs the logic there and gets very small amount of data, you probably, that's your best option there, right? I mean, you have a query runs on the server, you get only a very small portion of that time, and that's it. Um, sometimes if the query is really too complicated and, and it really uh, justify the overhead of getting all the data to memory, then for sure you can do uh, stuff that could be more uh, efficient. Um, it actually, uh, uh, Pandas has a, um, also a query language and, and a way to um, um, articulate these, these needs in a way that's uh, similar to query as you used to. Um, but I wouldn't, uh, like, on a general case, I wouldn't uh, get to Pandas because of performance issues with SQL. It's not what I think should do. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you really a lot. Thank you.